These notes go with section 8.6, which is all about writing linear equations. And although these notes start with the vocabulary of this term, best fitting line, our learning will be best if we hold off on defining that until we get to a problem where we need it. So first, let's go through some of the example problems. Example one is all about how to write the equation of a line if I tell you the slope and the y-intercept. So for example, suppose I described a line to you. I said I have this line and it has a y-intercept of negative 5. So its y-intercept is down here. And its slope was negative 2. So that's negative 2 over 1. So I go down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1. I can sketch the line quite easily. I'd like to know what is the equation of this line that I just sketched? It has a y-intercept of negative 5, and we go down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1. So what is the equation of that line? Well, it's going to have the form y equals mx plus b. But I kind of need to plug in some numbers for m and b to get a reasonable equation for the line. So how do I decide what to plug in for m and b? Well, it's right here in the problem. It says I'm trying to write the equation of a line with a slope of negative 2. That means m has to be negative 2. And so I can replace the m in the equation with negative 2. And it says that I want an equation that has a y-intercept of negative 5. That means that b equals negative 5. So I can replace the b in the equation with negative 5. So I have negative 2x plus negative 5. If we wanted to, we could simplify this plus negative 5. We could rewrite it as y equals negative 2x minus 5. Because remember, plus negative 5 and minus 5 are equivalent operations. So if someone tells you the slope and the y-intercept of a line, it's really easy to write its equation. You just replace the m with the slope and the b with the y-intercept, and ta-da, you're done. So you do the checkpoint and make sure that you actually do check your checkpoint against the answer key when it comes time to. All right, next, let's suppose that instead of giving you a description of the slope and y-intercept of a line, suppose I just gave you a graph, and I said, write the equation of the line that's shown here. Well, if I knew what the slope, the m, and the y-intercept, the b, were for this line, I could just plug them in. And that would be pretty easy. These are pretty easy things to find. The slope, if we remember, the slope is rise over run. So I start at one of the points. I'll start at this point, 0, 2. My rise is 2. I go up by 2, so my rise is a positive 2. And my run, I go over 1, 2, 3. My run is positive 3. So my slope is 2 thirds. So my equation in the mx plus b, the m is going to be 2 thirds. So I'm going to jump down here to where the equation is shown and fill in where the m belongs with 2 thirds. Next, I need to find out what b is. That's the y-intercept. Well, this line crosses the y-axis. That's the definition of the y-intercept. crosses it right here. It crosses it at the point 0, 2. So b in this case is 2. So I can replace the b in y equals mx plus b with 2. And ta-da, I'm done. Next, we're going to work on writing the equations of lines that are either parallel or perpendicular to some other lines. So first, let's try and understand what questions like this are even asking. This one says, write an equation of a line. So I'm looking for y equals mx plus b for a particular line. And I want a line that's parallel to this line. So let me just real quickly sketch that line. This line, y equals 8x, looks like this. It has the point 0, 0 on it. And it has a rise of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 over 1. It's a very steep line that goes right through the origin. Pretend for me that this is straight. So I want a line that's parallel to this line and that passes through the point 0, 3. So I'm actually trying to write the equation of a new line that goes through the point 0, 3 
but that has the same slope as the line that I sketched so badly earlier. I want these two lines to be parallel to each other. So what's the equation of the red line here? Well, what do I know about the red line? Do I know it's y-intercept? Sure, I do. It tells me in the problem that it's y-intercept is 3. So I know that for the red line, b is 3. Do I know the slope for the red line? Well, here's what I know. If two lines are parallel to each other, they have the same slope. So if the red line is parallel to the black line, then the slope of the red line is the same as the slope of the black line. If I look up here, I can tell that the slope of the black line is 8. So that means the slope of the red line must be 8 as well. So the equation of the red line is y equals 8x plus 3. These two lines are parallel because they have the same slope, but the line in red passes through the point 0, 3. 0, 3, in fact, is its y-intercept. For this next little segment, you don't need to take any notes, but please do just try and listen and understand this. I explained something about perpendicular lines. I'm going to draw a coordinate plane, an xy axis. And on there, I'm going to sketch in two different lines. So here's one line, shown in red there. And I'm going to show another line that is perpendicular to it. Remember that lines that are perpendicular meet at right angles. So if I were to draw the angle here between those two, that would be a right angle. Let's think about what we notice about the slopes of these two lines. Look at the line in green. Is this slope positive or negative? If you remember from slope dude, this is a nice, nice negative. This is coming downhill. So the slope of this one is going to be negative. I don't know exactly what number the slope is, but I know that it's going to be a negative number. If I look at the red line, I can tell the red line slope, this is puff, puff positive. Skiing up this slope would be really hard. So this one is positive. So here's a pair of perpendicular lines. One of them has a positive slope and one of them has a negative slope. What I want you to think about is, are there perpendicular lines that both have positive slopes or that both have negative slopes? Pause this presentation for a minute and do some sketching to see if you can draw two lines that are perpendicular, that meet at a right angle, where their slopes have the same sign. So hopefully you've seen that if you draw two lines that are perpendicular, one of their slopes will be negative and one of the slopes will be positive. Next, let's see if we can take a look at the numerical values. Is that slope negative 2 or negative 4 or positive 8? Let's try and fill in the numerical or the number parts. So let's start with our green line here. This green line, we know that its slope is negative, so it's Nice, nice, negative coming downhill. But negative how much? Well, we need to know its rise and run. I'm going to pick two points on this line and find the rise and run of them. In this case, I go down one, that's where the negative comes from, and over one, two, three, four. So the slope of the green line is negative one-fourth. Now let's take a look at the slope of the red line. I'm going to pick two points on the red line here. Here. The slope of the red line is the rise is 1, 2, 3, 4. I go up 4 and over 1. <coughs> so the slope of the red line is positive 4 over 1. So let's compare the slopes of these two perpendicular lines. One of them is negative and one of them is positive. One of them has a slope 4 over 1. One of them has a slope 1 over 4. This pattern that they have opposite signs and their number parts are flipped upside down or reciprocals of each other. This is true for all perpendicular lines. So let's add this into your notes. Off in the margins here, next to example three, let's make a note like this. Perpendicular lines.
that is lines that meet at a right angle. So I'm just going to draw some perpendicular lines there to remind myself that perpendicular means they meet at a right angle. Their slopes are opposite reciprocals of each other. What does that mean? Opposite means if one is positive, the other is negative. If one is negative, the other is positive. Their signs are opposite. Reciprocals means if one is fourth, then the other one, we switch. The top and the bottom is four over one. We flip the number upside down and we switch its sign. So what does that mean? If this line has a slope of positive two, then the second line here must have the opposite sign. So this one was positive, this one was negative. And I take that slope of two, I think of it as two over one, and I flip it upside down. This one has a slope of negative one half. So you need this information in order to do problem B here. So let's take a look at problem B. Problem B asks us to write an equation of a line. So we're writing the equation of a new line. And our new line has a form y equals mx plus b. And here's what I want to be true about our new line. I want it to be perpendicular to the line y equals negative 1 half x plus 3. So I drew that line here. This is y equals negative 1 half x plus 3. It has a y-intercept of 3. Its slope is negative and 1 half. Rise is 1, run is 2. And I want my new line to go through the point 0, negative 5. So 0, negative 5 is down here. So I want a line that goes through 0, negative 5 and is perpendicular to the line that's shown there. I'm going to sketch that line in, in blue. So the line shown in blue here goes through the point 0, comma, negative 5 and it is perpendicular to the line that was shown. So the question is, what are the m and the b for that blue line? Well, the b is pretty easy. I can look at the blue line and see that it crosses the y-axis at negative 5. So b is negative 5. The slope is a little harder. I know the slope of this line is negative 1 half, and these two lines are perpendicular. So let's remember our notes about perpendicular lines. Their slopes are the opposite of each other. They have the opposite sign. So if the line they gave me has a negative slope, the line I drew in blue must have a positive slope. Their slopes are also reciprocals. That means I'm going to take the number and flip it upside down. So this one had a slope of 1 over 2, negative 1 half. I'm going to flip that over to 2 over 1. I'm going to let the slope in my new line be 2 over 1. So the equation of the blue line is y equals positive 2 over 1x plus negative 5, or minus 5. I can write this a little bit more simply as y equals 2x minus 5. So that's the equation of the line in blue here. The line that's shown to be going through 0, negative 5, because its y-intercept is negative 5, and its slope is the opposite reciprocal, opposite sign, upside down, from the line that they gave us. If you'd like to pause this presentation for a minute, you can see how to fill in the remaining sections of your note-taking guide on this page. We did explain both the solution to A and the solution to B in a little bit more depth, but if you're more comfortable having those boxes in there filled in, by all means do so. Now is the point where we want to come back to that vocabulary term that was at the start of this section of notes, and that is a best fitting line. The easiest way to explain to you what a best fitting line is, is to show you an example. So what we have here is something called a scatter plot. We have an x-axis and a y-axis, and we have a bunch of different points. So each of these points has an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate, and we have them plotted along here. You can see that those points don't make a perfect line. If I connected these two points together, I'd have a 
flat line. If I connected these two together, I'd have a line with a slope of 1. But it's also obvious that these points kind of, sort of, maybe fall along a line. They're not perfectly along a line, but it's kind of close. The best fitting line is the line that does the best job of approximating the pattern that's in this data. So I can show you some very bad fitting lines. For example, if I drew a line like that, clearly that line in red there doesn't come close to approximating that data. It's just not anywhere near. If I drew a line like this, I'm still not approximating that data. But if I were to draw a line sort of like that-ish, that line seems to do a pretty decent job. It's not perfect, but it does a good-ish job of following the pattern that's in those points. So I could sketch that close-ish line in. And that would be our best fit line. We can do a pretty good job of drawing a line that fits quite closely to a scatter plot just by looking at it visually. This is something that humans are actually pretty good at. Your graphing calculator can find you the exact best fit line that does the very best job of minimizing the total distance that all of these points are away from the line. Using your graphing calculator to do that requires a little bit more knowledge than we have this year, but you will get to it in algebra next year. So let's make use of this then. It says here, the table shows the number of elementary and secondary school teachers in the United States for the years from 1992 to 1999. The x-coordinates in this table tell us how many years it's been since they started tracking this data. So when zero years have passed, that's the first year they tracked it, which was 1992. This would be 1993, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, and 99. And then down here shows the number in ten thousands of teachers. Why? So we have this set of x-coordinates and a set of y-coordinates. Part A says approximate the equation of the best fitting line for the data. So the first thing we want to do is to actually plot these x-y pairs on a graph. Notice the graph they gave us has one of these break in the axis things, which is fine. You can do that. You can have a break in your axis. You just need to indicate that by that little squiggly sign there. So let's plot these points. 0, 282 is there. 1, 287 is there. 2, 293 is about there. 3, 298 is about there. 4, 305 is about there. 5, 313 is going to be about there. 6, 322 and 7, 330. Now those might look like they're right exactly on a line to you. But let's see if we could find if these, in fact, are all exactly on a line. Let's double check that using the table. For every step up in this table, x is going up by 1. There. Does y go up by the exact same amount every time? Well, from 282 to 287, that's an increase of 5. From 287 to 293, that's an increase of 6. From 293 to 298, that's an increase of 5 again. From 298 to 305, that one's an increase of 7. So you can see that the pattern isn't consistent in the table itself. These points don't all fall exactly on the same line. But that's okay. We can find a line that's kind of close-ish to them. So we've made a scatter plot here of the data and we can visually, we can tell that there's going to be a line that goes pretty well through those points. So for example, if I were to sketch that line in, it might look something like that. That line seems to do a pretty good job of fitting that data. So I'd like to know an equation 
of that line in blue. So I'd like to know the y equals mx plus b for the line that's in blue there. So I need to know the y-intercept and the slope. Well, I can tell the y-intercept from looking at this. The y-intercept is going to be 280 on there. Now notice that 0, 280 wasn't one of our original points, and that's okay. The points on our best fitting line don't have to actually be points from the scatter plot. Now I need to find the slope of my blue line. Well, it looks like my blue line goes through this point, 0, 280. So I'm going to make myself a little xy table so I can find the slope. It goes through the point 0, 280, and it goes through this point up here, which is 7, 330. That does happen to be one of the points on our table above. So now I can find the slope of this line. As I go from 280 up to 330, I'm going up by 50, so my rise is 50. From 0 to 7, I'm going up by 7. So my slope is 50, that's the rise, over 7, that's the run. So 50 divided by 7 is just a little bit more than 7. So we're going to approximate this as 7.1. The line, the blue line we drew, crosses the x or sorry, the y-axis at 280. So the y-intercept is 280. So the equation of the line in blue, the y equals mx plus b, the m for that line is approximately 7.1, and the b for that line is 280. So an approximate equation of the best fitting line is 7.1x plus 280. Why is this useful? Well, we can use this line to predict what's going to happen in the future. We don't know from this table how many tens of thousands of teachers there are in years past 1999. But I could use this best fitting line to predict how many there will be. So it asks to predict the number of teachers in the year 2006. Well, in 2006, the x value in our table is going to be 2006 minus 1992. This is going to be 14. So 2006 is 14 years after 92. That's our x value. So I want to calculate y, which in this case stands for the number of teachers, when x is 14. And I can use my equation from here to do that. y equals 7 Point 0.1 times 14, because I'm replacing the x with 14, plus 280. 7.1 times 14 is 99.4 plus 280 gives us 379.4. And remember that y is the number in 10,000, so this is how many 10,000s of teachers there are. So I have to take that 379.4, and I multiply it by 10,000. And I get 3,794,000 teachers in the United States in 2006.